emisión.net Hello again and welcome to Letter from England, broadcasting for AC Press and the Spanish Evangelical Alliance. Not much room for God. British scientist Stephen Hawking, the cosmologist well known for his work on black holes, has claimed that the laws on which science is based and from where it derives its theories of the origin of the universe don't leave much room for miracles or for God. Hawking, uh, who is lecturer in theoretical physics at Cambridge University, says... Science is answering more and more questions which used to be the domain of religion, adding that he was confident that science would soon provide a definitive explanation as to how the universe began. Recent observations, he says, of distant supernova suggest that dark energy is in fact causing an acceleration in the universe's expansion rate. Well, broad claims indeed, and Antonio Cruz, an evangelical pastor who holds a doctorate in biology and has uh, written uh, quite extensively on this issue, believes Hawking is making unprovable assertions. He says in order to sell more books, because the name of God sells. He also thinks it's a reaction by Hawking against Christian theistic evolutionists, as well as those of his colleagues who believe in intelligent design. Cruz says, Hawking has looked for a theory of everything, of creation without a creator. But the fact is that saying that science leaves no room for God is actually an unscientific position of faith in materialism and science in order to deny the existence of God. Kluf believes that the existence of physical laws, their complexity, points to something which is a cosmic intelligence above and beyond luck or chance. He goes on to say that it's good that science has done away with magic, but that it is quite another to say that it has done away with God, something, of course, which cannot be proven. In fact, Hawking stops being a scientist at this point and becomes religious, preaching a faith without God and one based on material things. What's more, recent scientific discoveries lead to the exact opposite. The complexity of relativity and quantum mechanics, while not proving the existence of God, does make the possibility of God much more real. And that's the view, of course, of many non-Christian scientists as well. Hawking is not enamoured uh, with the uh, CERN experiment being conducted underground in Switzerland. Uh, he is sure scientists there will not be able to prove Higgs's theory on the form particles must take to acquire mass, uh, a conclusion which would unravel the mystery surrounding the formation of the universe. He says, I think it would be much better not to find the Higgs particle. It would show us that something was wrong and that we need to think about it all over again. As for fears that the experiment might cause a catastrophe, Hawking says it could cause a tiny black hole, but thinks it's unlikely. He says the long-term future of the human race is in space, uh, and thinks it will be very difficult to avoid a disaster on planet Earth during the next hundred years. Kuth at least agrees with him on this point. He says the ecological disaster is happening, as is the economic crisis. And in a globalised world, a disaster which happens in one part affects the rest. There is still hope but serious measures would need to be taken, because if not, then one day we will be surprised by a worldwide ecological disaster of undreamt of proportions. Hawking, who took part in a flight to experience the lack of gravity, would love to go into space and hopes to encourage manned space flights. As for the energy in the universe, he says ordinary matter from which humans and stars are made only make up 5% of the total mass on the universe, in the universe, a further 25% is in the form of dark matter, which cannot be seen but can be detected due to gravity. And the remaining 70% is dark energy, a mysterious form of energy which causes the expansion of the universe to speed up instead of slowing down. And Hawking reckons that as further research decodes completely the sequence of the human genome, so within a hundred years it will be possible to discover how to modify intelligence or instincts such as aggressiveness. This, he says, could lead to some people not being able to resist the temptation to improve human characteristics, such as memory size, resistance to disease, or the duration of life, but warns that this could also cause serious problems for, quote, unimproved humans uh, who would be unable to compete. Well, not much room for God? Well, there wasn't much room in Bethlehem either, was there, when Joseph and Mary looked for somewhere to stay? But Jesus was still born there and changed the course of history forever. Uh, and one day he'll come back uh, in a cosmic uh, bang of undreamt of proportions uh, to put an end to this world and to create the new one that he has promised. There's plenty of room for God. The question is, is there room for him in our lives? Thank you for listening. Uh, we find it at emission.net each week. Goodbye for now. <laughs>
emisión.net